The schedule in September isn't getting any easier. A week after playing the Pac-12 Colorado Buffaloes, the Texas State Bobcats are back home tonight for the Sunbelt Conference opener against preseason favorite Appalachia State, a team that's won 20 of its last 22 conference games. Mountaineers second series, a screen to the far side is caught, blown up again. A tackle for loss back at the 29 yard line. Uh, the catch there for the Mountaineers was T.J. Watkins, but Hal Benson was right there. 7.50 to go, first quarter, no score. Mountaineer ball at the 46, blitz from the Bobcats, pays off. Brian London shoots through and drills Jalen Moore back at the 42. He'll lose four yards, second out at 14. Motion from Brown out of the backfield. And now comes left handoff from Williams trying to find the corner to the outside. Has it 25 30 into the second area across the 35 and a burst down to the 40 yard line. 20 yard down up there for Robert Brown Jr. First down, Texas State. Out of the gun, Williams three wide. Play fake. Protection standing strong. A deep ball over the middle looking for Hayes and he's got the catch inside the five towards the goal line. Is he in? He's got it. Touchdown, Texas State. What a play. What a play, but Grant, let me say this. It started with the protection up front. App State, they were coming after Damian Williams, and it was a nice grab. I mean, Mason Hayes, he used every millimeter of his fingertips to reel that football in. Go to the post, Mason Hayes. Watkins comes in motion right to left. Bobcats bringing a blitz. Lamb back to throw, pressured, and sacked back in the 16-yard line. This Bobcat defense is relentless, and it brings up fourth down. Soft coverage here for the Mountaineers on third down and nine. Williams pressure steps up and throws. The pass is caught. A diving catch made for the first down by Furman Morbley at the App State 41. Under center, Williams motion again from Haydale. Right to left. Keeper for Williams. Behind his left guard. Breaks a tackle inside the 25 and down to the 19-yard line. 13-yard gain. And the Bobcats are inside the red zone from 27 yards out. The staff from Mortar set down by Hayes, kicked by Sherman to the uprights, and that ball is on the money. It is good. 13 to go. Second quarter, Texas State 10, Appalachian State nothing. Third and goal for the Bobcats 7. Snap back to Lamb, four man rush, pass middle is caught, touchdown by Thomas Hennigan. A quick route, quick throw, and a quick TD for the Mountaineers. And the Bobcats hanging tough with a preseason conference favorite through 30 minutes of action. Texas State leading Appalachian State. Your score is the Bobcats 10, the Mountaineers 7. Well, I think we're playing hard. Uh, we, we've done some things that kind of hurt ourselves. Um, we've got to find a way to play better in the second half, play with the same intensity that we played with in the first half, but play better in, in the second half. Three plays into the drive, 54 yards already for the Mountaineers. Goal to go for the Bobcat 5. Ball right hash, handoff four, up the middle, driven back, slung down. Fort Progress marked to a close to the nine-yard line. Bobcats, tremendous pursuit of the football. Hal Benson was there, and it brings up second and goal. Shears the snap, the set down, kick to the uprights. It is up, and this game is tied. Motion out of the backfield, handoff to Brown, the running back. Running right, turns the corner, 30, 35. Puts it in an extra gear across the 40-yard line. Slammed it bounds this time midfield with 47. Impressive 22-yard got up there by Robert Brown. Soft cover to the outside. Snap to Williams, looking left, throws left. That pass is caught by Hayes. Spins it up a tackle inside the 40-yard line. Out of bounds, new sideline after 35. First down, Texas State. Takes a shotgun snap. Deep drop of the pocket, now spins to his left, and he will run it at the 35 and the 30. Cutting it back inside of the 25 and down to the 21-yard line. 13-yard gain, Jamie Williams and another first down. The staffer is water, the holder is Hayes. A 39 make it 40-yard fugal attempt for the lead. Here's a snap set down. The kick is up by Sherman and Dolper in kick, and that kick is no good. Out of the gun, Lamb, two receivers right from the left hash. Takes a snap, hand off Upshaw again. Second effort will back his way into the end zone, and for the first time tonight, the Sunbelt favorites are on top, now 16-10. Three-man rush for the Mountaineers, delay blitz. Williams rolling out to his right, looking. Williams will throw it on the run. King at the 40-yard line, 45, and a block inside of midfield. Seven near sideline, 35 inside the 20, and push it down by Duck at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Cats coming up. What Damon's? 
capabilities are. And one of the reasons that, that you know, we, we go recruit guys like Willie and Damien is they, they can get out of trouble. And when they get out of trouble, they can make a play. Um, Damien's able to get himself out of some trouble and make plays uh, with his arm and with his leg. So This is a 38-yard attempt for the 21. Warner will snap it to Hayes, the holder, to make it a four-point game. The snap is low. The set is down. The kick is up to the uprights, and it is a four-point game. Full wide for Lance. Here's the blitz. Hand off, and that's not going anywhere. Ishmael Davis, a tackle far numbers at the 29-yard line of Upshaw. No gain, and that'll set up a 46-yard field goal attempt for Rubino. Snap set down. The kick is up by Rubino in Doberin. And the Mountaineers are back on top by seven Time as he out. puts that through the pipes. Here's the blitz from App State. Pass near side, intercepted by Duck. Down the near sideline, 30, 25, inside the 15, and tackled by Brown to the 13-yard line. Lamp with the pistol. Will keep it himself. Left side is hit. By the way, the ball may have come out. It did. The ball came out, recovered by the Bobcats in the end zone. Ball popped three by Brian London, and this football game is not over. Our coaches train us to right when the turnover, uh, play the next play. So the next, the next play is the most important play, so that's how we focus on it. The transfer quarterback calling for the snap. Here's the blitz. Williams looking to throw. Steps up and throws. Pass caught by King. 15 to the 20. Putting it back inside of the 25 and down to the 29-yard line. It is 16 yards. First down, Texas State. Three-man rush for the Mountaineers. They drop eight in coverage. Williams rolls out right. Passes. Caught by Elijah King. Skirting it about through sideline. Right at the 50-yard line. First down, Elijah King again on this drive. 33 seconds to go. Bobcats down 20 to 13. This drive began back at their own one. Full wide for Williams. Four-man rush, App State. Williams, pressure. Rolls out left, throws left. Pass caught by Hayes. Breaking the tackle, 25. Down to the 20-yard line, Mason Hayes. Four progress, calling the stop of the 20 with 22 seconds to go. Second to go for the seven, 10 seconds to go. Here's a blitz from App State. Seven-man rush, pass middle, is caught. But in play, the one-yard line by King, and the Bobcats are going to run out of time. At the one-yard line, the Bobcats lose the conference opener by a yard. A bunch of guys in that locker room really, really hurt, and and uh, it hurts to lose. But, uh, and again, I'm going to tell you, I told them I was proud of them. I was proud of the way they fought. I was proud of the way they competed. Uh, again, uh, we've 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 made a, a, a bunch of strides in this football program, but uh, uh, we still got a long way to go. And as um, uh, long as we keep getting up and coming to work every day, and learning from mistakes, and taking days like today, and continuing to get better, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be fine. This program's gonna be fine if we keep recruiting the type of kids we got in the locker room right now. Uh, we'll, we'll be fine. So, uh, again, I'm proud of them. I hurt for them. I hurt for them uh, more than anything else because they battled. They battled. There's some really, really uh, um, hurt feelings in that locker room. But we got we to gotta put it behind us and get ready to go tomorrow and uh, try to be better tomorrow than we were tonight. Thrill in the conference open and the Bobcats fall literally into short. Final score for Bobcat Stadium. Appalachian State 20, Texas State 13. The Texas State Bobcat football season is presented by HEB. My family's been growing tomatoes for four generations. First in Italy, and today, in greenhouses all across North America. No matter the weather, we're always growing to supply longtime partners like HEB with our best, most flavorful tomatoes year round. Like Angel, Zima, Champagne Sweet, and other specialty tomatoes. We use natural growing methods to help them thrive. So we can always deliver sweet, delicious tomatoes. This is the Bite Size Tomatoes Department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. Sir Jeremy, you are a true friend of the crown. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. dilly. Madam Susan, you are an even truer friend of the crown. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. dilly, dilly. What is that? This is a spiced honey mead wine that I have really been into lately. Please follow Sir Brad. He's going to give you a private tour of the pit of misery.
I'm sorry, what? Pit of misery, dilly dilly. Yeah. Here's to the friends you can always count on. What do I like about Texas State? People watching on the quad. I love that we can express ourselves. Our campus is so beautiful. Bobcat football. The glass bottom boat. Our professors are amazing. When I see Old Main, I know I'm home. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. Our Tech Library. Soapbox Derby. I'm doing amazing research. I'm definitely jumping in the river at graduation. I'm just proud to be a Bobcat. Can I like say all my favorite things? <laughs> Our goal now is to try to transform the players in our program into a better football program, a better football team. An accountability level that's off the charts. Coming out of last Saturday's ball game, felt like we came out fairly healthy. Uh, coming out of the ball game, it was a physical ball game, but I felt like our kids. We came back Sunday in practice and had a good Sunday practice, and and uh, um, got some things worked on, corrected on Sunday. Uh, felt like our kids battled Saturday night. Uh, we talked about that Saturday after the game, um, so we we're excited about moving on to the next uh, next opponent. I felt like uh, you know our our summer uh, training camp working two minute and working situations came into play, and that we had done a good job with that. Um, and I felt like we weren't we weren't out of place in the last three or four minutes. I felt like we were uh, uh, in position where uh, we were ready to go win a game. And uh, we came up a little short, but uh, felt like we were in that position to, to go win a game. You know, we still want to be, you know, more physical and more precise in the run game uh, on offense, and and continue to grow and get better in our pass game. Uh, we, we're still not there where we want to be in the, in the pass game, so uh, we've got some things to do. We got better. We, you know, we emphasized last week being better on third down on offense. We were better on third down. Um, so, you know, this week we, we, we're going to emphasize how we, we got to score touchdowns in the red zone. We didn't score touchdowns. We kicked two field goals in the red zone. So we got to figure out how to be better in the red zone this week. Good football team. When you look at the rosters, uh, uh, a lot of experience on the, on the roster, a lot of guys, a lot of juniors and seniors. And that's what I look at. I look at depth and, and experience on the roster. They got a lot of guys. I think they got seven starters return on defense, uh, very talented quarterback. Big physical running back, uh, good size in both lines. Uh, so they're going to be a big challenge for us, be a challenge much like we had this past Saturday. Some beers have a lot of ingredients, a lot of different ingredients. Our beer is brewed with four essential ingredients, barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on, brewed to be America's favorite light lager. What do I like about Texas State? People watching on the quad. I love that we can express ourselves. Our campus is so beautiful. Bobcat football. The glass bottom boat. Our professors are amazing. When I see Old Main, I know I'm home. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. Our Tech Library. Soapbox Derby. I'm doing amazing research. I'm definitely jumping in the river at graduation. I'm just proud to be a Bobcat. Can I like say all my favorite things? <laughs> 
they're tenacious, driven. You know, honestly, I think they're fun. Their energy level is great. Um, their energy level is great, and like I said, it's it's thinking, you know, the same pace, the same ideas, and they've got to be together. <laughs> uh, we have some finishers. They've just got some innate ability to know when to hit it and know how to finish. Um, so I'm excited about the firepower. The I-35 showdown is this week in between Texas State and UTSA. While there's only ever been one football game played between the two, this weekend's game is being called a rivalry game. Whether that's because of the history the two schools have against each other in other sports, the proximity between the two campuses, or simply because Bobcats and Roadrunners don't get along, there are no shortage of reasons why Bobcat fans want nothing more than a win this weekend over UTSA. We're just excited to beat them and prove everyone wrong that we are the better school. <laughs> yeah, I have some friends that, that, uh, that are from UTSA and play baseball there and just like them and their social media and their friend, they seem to think they're a little bit better than they are, but most college to the... Oh. I have some friends on the football team. I know. I told them if they won that I would cook them dinner. <laughs> so they better win. <laughs> I think a lot of the a lot of the people here and a lot of the people at UTSA we're all from you know similar high schools, similar areas growing up. Um, so we have a lot of friends at those schools, and we you know we like the rivalry aspect, and we're we're both kind of on the come up, trying to you know get that national ac uh, recognition that we're looking for. So I think that could kind of butt heads, and and that's kind of why we have that rivalry. Usually when I think of rivalry, I think of years of history. <laughs> that's that's what I I think of years of history. So I, I've been in those kind of games. So uh, I don't I don't mean to disrespect what everybody's trying to say about the Texas State uh, UTSA rivalry. I just think it has to grow into that uh, when you just start. One, we're not in the same conference. It'd be great if we were in the same conference. That that would make it a rivalry. And uh, what's UTSA would jump into Sun Belt. You know, it'll be a lot of fun. Like I said, you know, knowing some of those guys and hearing about them a lot. And, uh, yeah, we've never been a part of – most of the guys on this roster have never been a part of a game, you know, against UTSA, so we're excited for it. If you add up the total amount of games Texas State and UTSA have played against each other in men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball, softball, and soccer, the number is 380. The actual total of wins for the Bobcats, 214. For UTSA, 164 with two ties. However, UTSA does have the edge on the gridiron, but the Bobcats can even that with a win this Saturday at Bobcat Stadium. I'm Brandt Freeman, and we'll be right back with more of The Path, Texas State Football. Our goal now is to try to transform the players in our program into a better football program, a better football team. An accountability level that's off the charts. I'm telling you, my hand placement is just too good. Hey, plenty of time I will never lose against you. One on one, I would never lose against you. Kansas, Kansas versus North Carolina, no chance. So we're just going to walk through this, okay? So give me four front side here. Four front side. Get out. Go, get back there or something. Just back up, back up. Okay? All right? 
So you're just gonna walk forward, okay? I'm gonna point who don't want, okay? Uh, let's go Crutch and Mitty. There we go, Crutch and Mitty. You guys keep going and you two stop, okay? All right, here we go. Oh, gotcha. You was 230 though? Today? Over it? You didn't have to be over. Just 230. To play one more college snap? I told him a million dollars for a game. Yeah. You missed that. You missed the feeling too. There's nothing like it. Bursting. There you go, burst out, burst out. There you go, here we go, here you go, Hunter. There you go, big dog. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go, Ross. Run, run, 85. Rushing, rushing. You gotta scoot out this way. Yeah, back this way, cause you're, yeah, you need to keep coming. You need to keep, no, no, no. Your alignment, I'm sorry. Your alignment. Four back? Yeah, this way. No, 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 this way. Oh, This way, yeah. You good? Okay. Ready to go. Good, good, nice job. Nice job, Gabe. Squeeze and left, squeeze and left. Ready to go. Ah, uh, come on, French, a little bit more bucket. A little bit more bucket. Ready to go. Good, that's much better. Don't have to, hey, all you gotta do is just lean back into him. Right here, lean back into him. Lean, I know, I know, lean back into him. Be physical, I'm running, I'm running. I'm not gonna slow down before, I'm gonna run through him and then get to my spot. Does that make sense? I'm not gonna stop my feet. Stay off the cones, hey, that's pretty good right there. Keep running, okay, so watch. He followed him, boom, 21. You see that? Hey, just stay square on that. Hey, just stay square, let him decide where he wants to run the ball. You keep, you keep fighting leverage out here, okay? All right, running back will decide where he wants to go. Give him two-way go. Fighting it, rip and run, rip and run. Good, hey, but you shouldn't lose leverage. You shouldn't lose leverage, but if you do, rip and run. Just like you did, that's a nice job. Hey Bobcats, make sure to show your love and follow the Bobcats on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and their YouTube channel. Show off your tailgating skills and team pride and you could win a $100 HEB gift card and bragging rights. To participate, all you have to do is show your team spirit by decking out your tailgate site and displaying HEB products in a creative way. Check out this week's winner. What do I like about Texas State? I love that we're close to Austin and San Antonio. The observatory, great stargazer. Our tech library. Our professors are amazing. Our round theater building. People watching on the quad. We're the only university in Texas to graduate a U.S. president. Our campus is so beautiful. I love our flexible class schedules. Saving turtles at the turtle crossing. Downtown San Marcos is practically on campus. The new labs at Star Park. I love that we can express ourselves. Grabbing lunch at Jones. Bobcat football. The glass bottom boat. So box dirty. <laughs> I'm doing amazing research. I love the squirrels around campus. I love exploring new ideas at Common Experience. When I see Old Main, I know I'm home. The courtyard at Taylor Murphy. I love our student art gallery. Climbing the rock wall at the rec center. I'm definitely jumping in the river at graduation. I'm just proud to be a Bobcat. Can I like say all my favorite things? <laughs> Saturday's I-35 showdown between Texas State and the Roadrunners is the first meeting between the two since they were both members of the WAC in 2012, a 38-31 win for UTSA at the Animal Dome. For more on this year's game, we are now joined by Andy Everett from the Roadrunners Sports Network. And Andy, UTSA's team this year off to a 2-0 start, one of those wins, a marquee victory on the road at Baylor to open their 2017 season. Looking at UTSA's start this year, the fact they made a bowl a year ago, if you can, describe the momentum the program has right now under second-year head coach Frank Wilson. Well, I think it's at an all-time high. Uh, he's done uh, just tremendous things in recruiting the type of athlete that I don't know that UTSA ever thought they would be able to recruit at this stage. And I think it's evident by the number of young players that are playing. Yes, they have a solid offensive line that's senior laden they have a, a running back that's a junior and a quarterback that's a, a that's a senior and a couple of senior wide receivers but defensively last year they played seven to ten freshmen 
in meaningful snaps and games. It's a just a tremendous amount of talent on this team like we've never seen before at UTSA, and uh, that's why they're playing as well as they are right now. On the topic of seniors, UTSA's quarterback is a senior, Dalton Sturm, and he's had impressive numbers so far this year. 34 of 42 passing, six touchdowns, no interceptions, and very much a dual-threat quarterback as well. At least 600 yards of total offense through two games. In terms of leadership and veteran presence, what does Sturm bring to the table for UTSA? Well, it's gotten better each and every year. And I think in these first two games, his confidence and his poise has been at an all-time high because there's nobody really behind him pushing him. He doesn't have to look over the bench and say, if I do something wrong, somebody else is going to come in. He's the guy. He has to be the guy. And I think he's taken ownership in that, in that there's really nobody else to play right now in meaningful snaps other than him. They're getting Bryce Rivers as many plays as they can, as soon as they can, in situations where he can be successful. But he's not there yet, and neither are any of the other backup quarterbacks. So he's the guy, and he's really the living up to that role of being the leader on this team. And I think leadership is something that is, is earned over time. And I think everybody's rallying around him, and when he steps in that huddle, uh, they're listening to what he has to say. Andy, on the other side of the football, UTSA's defense seemed to be the unit that propelled them to their success a year ago, and a big reason why the Roadrunners have been picked to win Conference USA's West Division this season. So looking at that side of the football, who are some of the playmakers we can expect to see take the field on Saturday? Well, there's two that I think are going to definitely be NFL players. One is Marcus Davenport, a senior defensive end. He'll stand up most of the time. So in the way that most of these uh, 4-2-5 or 4-3-4 defenses are a line now, the ends don't ever get in a three-point stance anyway. If you're not double-teaming him, then he's going to tackle somebody. Uh, the other one is Josiah Taueffa, who's a, a sophomore middle linebacker. He's projected to be a first-team all-team player this year. And the secondary, while you look at it and say, well, they're not as good as they were in the past because they lost two starters, but as good as the front six is for UTSA, the back five doesn't have to be great. They just have to defend for a little while because the, the pressure that the front six is going to get on on everyone is going to be that much better, and, and you're gonna, they're going to get to the quarterback. So those guys don't have to sustain that coverage for very long. We mentioned earlier this is the first game between Texas State and UTSA since 2012, but this weekend does mark the beginning of an eight-game series between the two. It's a series a lot of fans on both sides have been waiting for for a long time. In terms of atmosphere and the game itself, Andy, what are you expecting this weekend? Well, I, I, I'm not sure because they haven't played each other in six years, and the students really get behind it because for years and years and years we were conference rivals back in the Southland and one year in the WAC. And so all the basketball games were epic battles and the most attended games on either team's campus. And so I'm not sure how quickly it'll take to revitalize that because we're not conference opponents anymore to where we're playing each other every year. We've had to create this series that will – last for the next several years uh, and so I'm just interested to see how it will play as a non-conference team in, in, in the past where it was a conference game and I, I kind of look at it you know you look at Oklahoma and Texas it was Southwest Conference Big 8 for, for 50 years and now it's still the same basically because it's two Big 12 schools now you're going the opposite direction for years we were conference rivals and now basketball only plays once a year uh, and they switch venues every other year and in football now will be once a year for the next eight years. So it's going to be interesting to see how the students from both universities look at it. I know that UTSA feels very confident going into the game, and I think their fans do, but it's a rivalry game, and I think a lot of times, no matter how good or how bad the opponent is, you have to take that into consideration when you're playing a rival that can make their season with a win. Thanks again to Andy, and that will do it for this week's episode. I'm Brant Freeman, reminding you to trust the path. We'll see you next time.